Award-winning broadcast journalist Ed Marshall asks the tough questions you want answered. Informative, soul-stirring, one-on-one interviews about matters that affect our lives in this region we call home. Here now with Conversations is Ed Marshall. Well, hello and welcome. The aim of this show is to explore issues in our community that need real answers to affect a positive change and to share honest information which will hopefully improve the lives of all races and ethnicities in the river region. Although millions of lives have been lost to the coronavirus, many people still believe that the coronavirus vaccines are not working and that they don't believe that they're real and that they may cause them harm. And of course, we want to uh, talk more about that. So I have brought into the show today uh, the director of the nurses practitioners at LSU Health uh, in uh, New Orleans, and uh, that's the School of Nursing, and that's Miss Doctor rather, Doctor Leanne Fowler. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Really, really appreciate it. You know, th- there's been so many, you know, myths and rumors and and things going on from 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 Washington to to the state level. You know, and some people, and people that I know who are, uh, quote unquote, intelligent, supposedly, you know, say that they're not going to take these vaccines because they're spoofed, they don't work, blah, 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 blah. And uh, you all have been on the front line, all the, the nurses, and you've, you've seen uh, your fellow nurses work with people. Uh, it has to be pretty, pretty uh, hard to, to, to see people uh, to pass on uh, from this virus. It has been extremely hard. It is, it is exhausting. Um, not only have we seen patients, we've seen loved ones. We've seen colleagues and coworkers who, who get ill and suffer. And it's nonstop. You know, it's nonstop. Thankfully, we are moving into uh, maybe, hopefully, a phase that, that the, the, the numbers are down. Yeah, you know, yeah. we see less deaths. We only have about 20-something uh, patients on ventilators in the state of Louisiana. We still have over 200 people in hospitals in the state of Louisiana. So we're still taking care of them. Um, and usually the patients that we are taking care of who are still developing severe illness are those who haven't been vaccinated. Mm, mm. And that brings me to my first question. You know, the number of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths have decreased, as you said. But do we still need mass vaccination? Yes. You know, that, that hurting thing that they talk about. Yes, we still need vaccination. Um, the vaccinations have demonstrated very well in this short period of time to prevent severe illness. We had record numbers of deaths because of severe illness. We also had record record number of disabilities in our COVID long haulers. So the patients who survive, but may have organ dysfunction, brain dysfunction, um, difficulty breathing after being ill with COVID. So the vaccines are very, are still very necessary. And that brings me down to our next question. You know, have the, the, the indication of the vaccines available changed, especially since we had that hiccup with the with the J&J vaccine uh, complications that occurred a uh, while back? Well, yeah, they, they have changed. The mRNA vaccines, which are the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, the indications dropped in age. So now any person 12 years and older can be vaccinated. So that's, that's a, a blessing. That's a good thing now that we can get our children vaccinated. As for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it's, it's delivered differently. Um, therefore, you saw the complication with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine causing thrombotic thrombocytopenia. That's where clots form and it affects your platelets. Um, we saw that mostly in younger women. Hmm. Uh, but the, the message there is that it was very, very few, although those lives were very important. Sure. Out of this over 7 million people who were vaccinated with the J&J, my, 19-year-old son was one of them. Um, 
one in a million almost were negatively affected. I, I really like the fact that it, that it was transparently informed um, the public. You know, it was very transparent. They had a pause. They talked us through the process. They researched and dug deeper into why that happened. Um, there's still some questions left to be answered regarding um, that, that type of vaccine, but we have a lot of data with the mRNA vaccines that have no complications, no. very that, few that, complications. That complications was associated with J&J. Mm -hmm. um, does it occur with the Pfizer and the, and the Moderna? It has not, no. We have no evidence that that complication has, uh, has occurred with the mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer That's and correct. Moderna. The delivery of the mRNA vaccines is, is a little different than the J&J &J vaccine. The J&J &J vaccine uses adenovirus, um, whereas the mRNA vaccines use a little molecule of fat um, mm -hmm. to deliver it into our cells and, and teach us what to develop immunity to. And you mentioned earlier that, that children down 12 and, and older are receiving vaccines. What vaccine, are there any particular vaccines that are given to them? Yes, the Pfizer vaccine is, which is the vaccine that is now indicated for 12 years and, and older. Okay. And if, if, if they were not the ones with the highest hospitalization of deaths, why should they be vaccinated? Very good question. The, the reason is because they transmit. So right now we see our populations, our older populations, we have higher vaccination rates among our older populations. So we don't see the cases as high uh, in the age range of our older populations of patients. We see higher cases in anywhere between 18 and 30. Mm -hmm. um, so what we don't know is how many of our children we don't know enough of are still transmitting. Mm -hmm. um, and we also know that we don't have enough vaccinated in that age group. So that, that's the no. main reason. And the, and the big question that people ask now, should we still be wearing the mask or should we not be wearing the mask even though you've received your vaccine? If you're not vaccinated, then absolutely you should be wearing the mask. Mm. If you are vaccinated, there are some exceptions. Um, with that being said, it is taking a risk. You know, although you are vaccinated, you still can become infected. We do have some breakthrough infections. We know that viruses mutate and change and they have variants and whatnot. Um, the vaccines have shown very good you know, effectiveness against the variants, but there's still a possibility that you can become infected. Yeah. So it, it's it's making an informed decision. Thankfully, uh, many agencies are still requiring masks right. of and those who are vaccinated. Some stores say you can't come in unless you have a mask, even yes. if you've been vaccinated. Yes, and we know that there are some persons who cannot be vaccinated for yeah. for whatever reason. That's a very small population. Um, so, you know, it, it's not to vaccine shame anyone, but it is to be informed and, and take risks appropriately. Yeah. Do you all have any idea when people will stop be having to wear masks, period? Or? No. <laughs> that, that's the $100 question, huh? <laughs> yes. I wish I could predict the future um, and believe those who try, but no, the, the short answer is no, we don't know. And people have been vaccinated like us. Will, will that a time when people will need booster vaccines? Yes, it's very likely that we will need boosters. When is still being studied? Um, you know, we this is something we know about. Our vaccine program already has systems of boosters. You know, we do so with the flu, we do so with tetanus, we do so with others. So yes, it's possible that we will need boosters, especially as the virus changes. It may be seasonal. Um, hopefully it's not more than once a year, but it could be. But as long as we limit the host for the virus where, where it can live and transmit and grow, if we can limit as many hosts as possible, it's possible that we can, you know, keep the, the, the infection rates very, very low. Yeah. And, and of course the summer is coming now, so this is a, a better time to kind of keep it like... Uh, at bay. At bay, that's a good word. It is a good time because we, we're ready to travel. We're ready to get yes. out of our homes. We're ready to bring our children to the beach safely. Um, it is a good time, but again, we have to still recognize we are in a pandemic. That, that has not ended yet. So our risks should be measured. We should make them make informed decisions. Yeah. 
do you all get updates weekly, I'm sure, from, from the from the CDC and also from the, the governor's office and places like that? The governor's office, LDH, has been phenomenal. Our local health department here in New Orleans has been excellent with Dr. Avegno uh, at the helm, Dr. Cantor at the state level. I think that we get a lot of updates, information overload, but they're trusted. You know, they, they are doing the work nonstop of looking at the data, looking at the numbers in our communities, you know, across the state. Yeah. So I think that, um, yes, the updates are, are readily available, sometimes more than weekly. Yeah. Well, I, I'm so glad you've been with us today, and hopefully we've dispelled some of this, I call it misinformation yes. uh, ab about this, 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 this situation. Uh, any last words before I, I tell you? Uh, See you next time. <laughs> yes, well, I highly encourage all of my patients, all of my students, my family to be vaccinated. It's an informed uh, choice you're making. Uh, it's a personal choice, but I highly encourage it if it's the right choice for you. Dr. Powell, thank you for being with us. Yes. You were fantastic. Lots of great information. And that's what this show is about, uh, conversations where we try to get to the nitty-gritty of what, what's real, you know, because there have been so many myths of, on so many subjects, and you'll hear about that in months ahead. So we wanted to start with this one because this is, uh, this is life and death. So we appreciate you coming, and we want you to come back again. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully when, when we've heard it, this vaccine. Yes, <laughs> yes, anytime. Thank okay. you. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some, uh, some other folks who are doing some other things uh, at a uh, phenomenal community college here in New Orleans. And uh, they also are helping out with uh, the vaccine situation. So stay with us. The Willwoods community prays for the safety of health care workers and we thank them all for their dedication and service during this COVID-19 pandemic. To those on the front lines in hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, and testing centers, we thank you. We thank you for answering the call. The stakes are high and the challenges innumerable, with harsh conditions and no second chances. Yet our doctors, nurses, technicians, transporters, EMTs, pharmacists, and everyone who supports patient care are rising to the occasion, healing and caring for the most vulnerable in our community. You are our heroes. Thank you for the sacrifices you make every day and especially during this pandemic. Your dedication, commitment, and courage deserve our deepest gratitude and admiration. It's with your help we will all get through this. Well, welcome back. Times are changing across the country, especially for community colleges. They're now being viewed as quality institutions of higher learning and producing high wage earners. A star example is Delgado Community College right here in New Orleans. And joining us to share more information about the economic shift is Delgado's Vice Chancellor of Workforce Development and Technical Education, Ms. Orlando Williams. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Marshall, for having us. I appreciate you so much. The last time I was over at the campus was uh, about a week and a half ago, and I, I walked into the community, in the student center, and. I thought I walked into a doctor's office. They had more people with masks and giving more vaccines and, and, and things. I said, this is, pretty, this, is pretty, this is pretty good because this means that this school really cares about what's going on. So share that with us. We do. And actually today the uh, crew of Vax returned to like the student that. life. <laughs> and um, we vaccinated 131 students and faculty and some community members last time. And so they're there today for part two. But we have um, a theme, no sleeve left, left unroll and no arm left unshot. So if it's your first time receiving it, you can still come today. And we have already organized with Auctioner, our partner, and Braveheart mm -hmm. to um, reschedule, you know, another second opportunity. So Delgado, we realize Delgado has been around for 100 years, as you know. Years, right. And so we're not just around 100 years. We're actively involved with the community. We realize the importance of the vaccination and 
why we want our students and our staff to be and faculty to be healthy and on the front lines out there training workforce training people to come and work in this region so crew of vax return today yeah. and you all got on this uh like ahead of time you, you were telling me about how the uh, the, the chancellor over there uh, yes uh, yes <laughs> was, was kind of like flamboyant said, yes. we need to get this done yes she is uh, a fierce leader and um she is a breath of fresh air. We've had some great leaders since I've been there. Mm. Uh, Dr. Stibe, knowing Delgado, knowing this region, has gotten in and just, you know, just ran mm -hmm. with it. And so last year when um, COVID first came on site, she was already putting things in place so that our students didn't miss a beat. We went from um, in person to virtual with almost seamlessly wow. That's great. under her leadership. And then so now to get ahead of the vaccination and to try to curve this thing, she definitely um, has been pushing us to do and to get as involved with the community as we possibly can. It's not about uh, recruiting or anything like that. It's about making a healthy community exactly. and a healthy student base, like I said. So yes, Dr. Stive, she's fearless and she is not <laughs> afraid. She will get out there and start, she she'll roll up cookie. her sleeve. Yes, she is. <laughs> she, she'll roll up her sleeves to get it done, so. Let's talk about some of the most sought after uh, careers that, that, that you all have, the, the ones that the students are really coming there looking for. And, and what's good about this, Delgado, you have not just young uh, students, but you have older students who are retooling as well. We do. Um, right now, our skill trades are on a high, um, and definitely, of course, allied health. And then, so not just nursing, but we have a health coach program in the workforce place that lends to a, a bachelor's degree upon, you know, it's a part of the career sure, pathway. Sure. And so our nursing students, definitely that program, all allied health programs, as you know, have increased. Yeah. However, so has technology. And so we have lots of technology programs and would love to in invite you to sit in on one. One is a, a Scrum Master certification that we offer. And a lot of people are like, what is that? Scrum? What? You know, <laughs> but it's a, per it's a project methodology. And I took the course just to see what we were offering and how we could better explain it. And I'm a doctoral student. And right. let me tell you, it had me scratching my head. <laughs> sure. But it was very intense. Um, and it's something that we have found that companies, if people have that, that little certification, I say little certification because it's a week-long class, it's the difference between wow. your pay scale in some areas. And so we see a lot of increase in the area of technology. And then our skilled trades, like I said, um, our welders, carpentry. I get calls there. I was trying to just and I shouldn't have been because I was cheating on my diet. I was trying to eat a piece of pizza two days ago. And the guy walks up to me, and I'm in Homa. And he says, Arlanda, are you still at Delgado? I said, yes, I am. He says, I need welders. And I said, well, <laughs> join your friend because he just called me too. He says, no, I need like 250. Now, mind like you. 250. 250. Oh, my. So it's that yeah. we're seeing the comeback because you have to understand – uh, maritime and people don't don't really look at it when they're going offshore it's more than just that person that's on the boat right. it's those mom and pop organizations it's those smaller businesses that lead up to the tool pushers and all the rest so we're seeing that part of it and um, and hopefully we can continue to get just get in the mud as mm -hmm. the young kids say mm -hmm. and train these pe these mm -hmm. people because the calls are constantly coming for our precision machining um, tonight we have our, um, going into our third cohort for our mechatronics program, we have our information section tonight. A lot of people didn't even know what it was and now they realize that that's a big part of advanced manufacturing now. So we have expanded the companies that we're working with and then now we're getting more calls from students about the program in and itself. So because that also spells a uh, big, big paycheck. That's, what it, that's yeah. what it spells. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no longer uh, community college where you, you, you just get a, just enough to get by. Uh, you're getting uh, competitive uh, paychecks with, exactly. with corporate corporations, and that is fantastic. And speaking of uh, corporate America, uh, you know, uh, they're paying attention to Delgado now. You know, I, I love to hear when I, uh, that these companies like, like Auction, for, for example, uh, donated with $20 million. Tell us about that. So that was a major I mean, a major deal for us that the governor came down as well 
to uh, to to the groundbreaking, and it's going to be a new nursing facility oh. on Delgado's campus. Wow! It is going to be outstanding, state of the state of the arts. You know that Delgado has a very strong nursing program, has been known for many years for their nursing program. Wow. This is just going to expand Allied Health to a whole different level. You're talking about career pathways that people can start as a medical assistant, you know, get their field if they is just see how they like it and then go into LPN that leads to RN and then so forth and so on. Or they can go directly into the LPN program or the RN program. Mm -hmm. But we're giving so many different career pathways and apprenticeships that deal with allied health, which is something totally different to this region. We're preparing people on a whole different level. Because what if you go and you pay your money to become a nurse and then you have right. to give a shot and that's it, you faint, yeah. like me. I, that's never been a problem. <laughs> I bow down to nurses and doctors. <laughs> the sight of blood makes me weak. But this is an opportunity where you can get on different career pathways. And another program that is really amping up is our medical um, coach, our health, care, our health coach program, which is basically leading um, to a four-year degree. It starts in workforce, goes to the um, Allied Health Department, and then you go on to the four-year uh, status. Wow. And all of those, when we first started it, a health coach, people were like, what is a health coach? What right. is a health navigator? Well, we found out, unfortunately, through COVID what that is. That's that person that's on the phone now tracking. That's that person that's on the phone making certain that the medicines that you're taking are not having an adverse reaction. Yes. That's that person that the um, insurance companies are looking for every day yes. to get on the phone. And so Delgado was the first, and I think is still the only community um, college in the state of Louisiana that offers a health coach program that leads to the health navigator. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've heard y'all going to be expanding to uh, um, offer technology courses at, at uh, Nobic. Yes, we are. That is that that falls under my leadership, and I'm very excited about that. It was a sponsorship from uh, the LCTCS Foundation as well as uh, Louisiana Economic Development Authority. So we're going to be at, at Nobic. We're going to offer a lot of those classes I just was mentioning, the Scrum Master Certification, mm -hmm. the Agile Project Management um, Program. We're basically going to expand our technology footprint in the city of New Orleans to turn this into um, our own, I guess you can say, um, hub of uh, technology right. and, and then th we that's can bio innovation right? yes yes Super. yes yes that so we will be the silicon uh valley of the by on the bayou <laughs> or on the river down here to and and to offer different programs we're even looking to expand and offer certifications in ai but you hear that all day long and then yeah. the most popular use of it was Deion sanders he used ai He's using AI to attract the, the finest and the best athletes to come and play for Jackson State. And so that. the use of artificial intelligence has been something that's coming aboard. But I'll tell you where it helps out, too, with local colleges and municipalities. Because now you could use it for predictive analysts as far as buildings are concerned, as far as machining is concerned, how you're going to train your workforce for the next 10 to 15 years is all right. going to be based upon AI. So Delgado is going to be offering that certification. Yeah. So all of those are programs are going to be coming out of no big. That's I'll right. invite you to come down to please, see it. Please, please. Yeah, we have uh, two floors over there, so very nice building. Mm -hmm. You know, there are students that, that go to Delgado that still need a helping hand. Uh, in terms of fi finances. So y'all are bridging that gap by getting a lot of these local businesses to do fundraisers. Mm -hmm. and you recently had one um, over at Galatoire's. Yeah. We had a great one uh, a couple of days ago. Um, th that program started last year with one of our foundation board members, Mr. Uh, Trust Claire, and um, he picked two disciplines to start it off with, and it did well last year, so they brought it back again this year. and. Um, two more disciplines, but kind of made it like a competition between yeah, the two courses yeah. to say if auto, can automotive raise this amount and can um, uh, technology raise that right. amount. And so it was a great um, deal. It's a great opportunity because it awards scholarships to right. our students right. to continue on. So we have programs like that. We're also doing a program uh, with the state um, system office called Reboot. Yeah. So if you know of anyone that wants to take any of these skills trades, um, any of the technology courses or medical courses, 
they can get uh, a reduction of their fees through us. And so we're trying to meet the need Great. And, and, and meet people where they are. And I, we got just about a, a minute left. I want to spend more time on it. <laughs> Centennial, you, this is 100 years that Delgado has been in operation educating people. So tell us some of the things that, that the public can get involved in and expect uh, in the coming months. Certainly, so we definitely have our brick campaign. Um, I think it's like $25 a brick. We're gonna redo the walkway um, in front of building one. We um, also have a, um, we're redoing the, the, uh, the doorway at building one. So we have a kickoff August the 2nd. We have partnered with Tom Jarner Jr. We're doing a day of giving. Good. And so the goal is $100,000. And so we, you can see that, it, that will be coming out on our website shortly because it starts June 1st and it's gonna go through July the 31st. We did well, um, as a matter of fact, with Give NOLA, I pledged to walk a mile per $50. <laughs> I'm still regretting that. <laughs> and then in November, we have our big gala and we'll be putting information out sure. about that as well so that the public can join us. We are 100 years old because of the people in this region. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Because people supported Delgado, be it through tuition, be it through uh, you know workforce uh, training, mm -hmm. New Orleans is the reason why Delgado has withstood so many storms and yeah. still standing. So sad. Please come back and see us again. You are a wealth of information. I love my conversation with you, so <laughs> do come back again. I will. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> okay. And we're going to wrap up the show when we come back, so stay right here. have a lifetime of experience as a financial planner, a lawyer, a homemaker, an educator, a mechanic, a nurse. You know what I am now? I'm a Senior Corps RSVP volunteer. I build homes and young minds. I build parks and playgrounds. And support our nation's veterans. I build gardens and help families with their finances. I build healthy futures. And organize disaster relief. I build teams and friendships. And families. I build lives and communities. And myself. I'm a builder and I lead by experience. How about you? Join Senior Corps RSVP. Lead by experience. At SeniorCorps.gov. You can watch repeat broadcasts of this show on WLAE-TV's YouTube channel. Before we leave you, though, we say farewell to former Louisiana Governor Charles Buddy Romer, who died of complications from diabetes. Romer was known for speaking his mind, which led to a live statewide monthly TV talk show when he was during his tenure as governor. And I was honored that he chose me as his host. I was a lot younger there. Well, that's going to do it for our show. Until next month, when we'll have another conversation about a very big topic. Take care of yourself, and please stay safe. <laughs>